All right, so this is the slide presentation for covalent bonding. So molecular compounds and covalent bonds. So this is the type of, of a chemical bond. Number two, sharing is caring. I can define covalent and compounds, covalent compounds and covalent bonds, knowing that they are nonmetals and nonmetals. I can identify which elements on the periodic table will form covalent bonds and compounds. I can explain the sharing electrons from one nonmetal to another nonmetal. Using the periodic table, I can write chemical formulas for covalent compounds, and I can differentiate or tell the difference between ionic, metallic, and covalent and then identify the lone pairs. So using this cheat sheet, the AKA, the periodic table, the nonmetals are on the, the side of stair step, right? These are the nonmetals here on the, from the other side of the stair step, which uh, separates the metals from the nonmetals and the metalloids. So covalent bonds, um, electron sharing between nonmetal and nonmetal. Example, water, H2O, hydrogen's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal. You can see that we're sharing here where there's an overlap of the orbits. The X for the um, hydrogen is sharing with the dot from the oxygen for their electron. So Hydrogen is fine as two electrons and two electrons in this shell, so it's full, so it's got, uh, it's happy. And then oxygen has eight, so they're sharing those. So metal and nonmetal are not uh, covalent. They create stronger bonds than ionic. Electrons stay together in water and don't conduct electricity. Well, it's one of the examples here. All right, electrostatic bonds between metals and nonmetals. This would be your ionic bond. All right, strong attraction between atoms. Now this is talking about everything, covalent, metallic, hydrogen. This is the um, chemical bond. So a chemical bond are, is the heading that talks about all of these. And then the strong attraction between molecules. So what we're talking about here, here's the chemical bond between, it's the bond, so this laws, um, is what we've been talking about the bond between the atoms in the compound, but now we're talking about intermolecular, which is the bond between the attractive force between the molecules or compounds. So this compound is attracted to this compound and there's a attractive force. That's the intermolecular force. All right, so again, unstable, this is a metal. It wants to get rid of one. Fluorine wants to gain one. So this is our, and then we get a stable eight configuration. This is the ionic bond. But we still have the same similar um, features in the, when we want to get to a stable configuration. So, 
In this particular case, ionic bonds formed by a metal. and a non-metal. Metallic bonds are metal and metal. And then covalent bonds are non-metal. And non-metal. So the process that occurs when uh, atoms share electrons, if they need electrons, so like in this particular case, the hydrogen is covalently bonded, right? The hydrogen has one electron. It wants to fill the shell to make two. So if we put two hydrogens together, they share. And this is the, the sharing, how this shares. And see how it goes. So covalent bond, so stable, they share two electrons and then they count, count twice. So each one needed one, so they both have eight now as long as they share that. So a molecule or a group of atoms that held together by covalent bonds, no overall charge, like in the sodium and chlorine ionic bonds. So you can see where these have shared the carbon, needed eight, had four, so it shares with the fluorine, one, two, four, six, eight, okay? Now, there are, this is, we need to have two electrons here. They're not showing. In a covalent bond, atoms will share electrons to fill their outer shells. So here again, hydrogen has two in it now. Sharing here, two of them has two. And then we got two, four, six, eight for oxygen. So they're stable and happy. So when we share the new way of writing, this is the Lewis dot diagram. So two, four, six, so six valence electrons, right? Hydrogen, so it wants two, so we can put one, these two together, okay? And we can put these two together and we form what they call a single bond. So we would draw this line and then we have two unpaired and they call that lone pairs. This is a lone pair, unpaired. Pairing is sharing, so you can see how they come together. The X represents the electrons on the right, and the circles, the electrons on it. So they have seven. Now together they have eight. So this sharing pair here, two, four, six, eight. Count again, two, four, six, eight. So it really isn't eight altogether, but because they're the way they're bonded.
And then because of the bond, this is a single bond of two, single bond of two, if you can think about it. There's a electron in each end of those. We draw this, and these are our lone pairs. Lone pairs. Single bond represents two shared electrons. A double bond can form when there's, these are stronger than single bonds. So oxygen can share these two electrons. And then these two electrons. And now we've got a double bond. So there are four electrons here, two here, two here, and these are the lone pairs. Okay, nitrogen can form a triple bond. Triple bond has six electrons, so three and three for sharing. So we got, so basically if you count it this way, six, seven, eight, and if you count it that way, so that's why you do this, six, seven, eight. So we write, draw three lines and they're stronger. Double bonds can form um, these are stronger than single bonds, and then triple bonds are even stronger. Single bond, two electrons per, they're sharing two. It's always going to be a, um, a pair. So uh, one pair is two, two pairs is four, three pairs is six. Okay, so single bond, summary, one pair of shared electrons, two electrons, weak, double bond, stronger, and three triple bond is the strongest.